So, who are you, sir? I am Keith Marshall. Keith Marshall. And where are you from? Now I live at Mexborough. Mexborough? Mm -hmm. But I used to uh, live at Woodlands and I worked at Brosworth Pit there. Right. Mexborough, that's Ted Hughes' country, isn't it? Isn't that yes. the poet? Yes. So how far is that away? That's what, that's Seven the... miles. Seven miles. Great. So you were at Brodsworth? Yes. And how long were you there for? From 1959-60 to 1990 when it closed. Jeez. Right. So that's 30... 30 years. Wow. And did you come from a long line of mining people or are you well, a maverick? My granddad, he came from Ilkeston. And where's that? To the, it's Derbyshire. Okay. For the, for the mining. And then I had my dad, of course. My dad was a butcher or a butcher's mate right. or assistant. And then he went to the army during the war, came out, could, found out he couldn't manage on butcher's wages, so he finished up going down the mine. So the mine was well paid? Mm. Better paid than butchery. anywhere else. Yeah, really? butcher room. Butchery, we've got plenty of meat, but no money. Yeah. <laughs> well fed. Mm. So how old were you? Did, you? did you know him as a butcher? Uh, I was only a toddler. I can remember little things, you know, such as him making sausages and things like that. And, and going to the shop to him. But other than that, I was only a toddler. Yeah. So he went down the... The mine? Yes. And how long did his career last? Well, I'd be guessing here. I think it, I must have been about 10, I think, Right. when he went down the mine. And then he, he, he made a vow to me. He says, D you're not going down the mine. But for three months, I walked up and down the North Road from Woodlands to Doncaster trying to get an apprenticeship. Couldn't get one. In the end, went on my own and signed on at the pit without my dad knowing. He yeah. went crazy. But he Did says, he? You've, you've made your bed, now you're laying it. Really? And that's it. Did you have brothers and sisters? I had one sister. She didn't go down the pit. Or no. Did she? So he was happier with her? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, he was happy with me after that. Yeah. But, uh, at that moment, he said, no, it wasn't. Yeah. And I worked my way up from 15. I signed on at 15, but you're not allowed down the pit till you're 16. Mm -hmm. So I did me, I worked on the pit top, loading materials and that, and then went to do me uh, training at Bentley Pit. All right. Were you allowed to go down? Because so you were 15, you weren't allowed to go down one pit, but you were allowed to go down Bentley. Only with some super right. supervising trainees, trainers, I mean. Yeah. Yeah. And then I came back to Brodsworth when I was just before 16. Went in, in miners, I mean, into the wages office, for as a boy like. T-boy, amongst other things. And then when I was 16, went down, went on to the haulage, what they call the haulage, transporting coal and empties and forward, back and forwards. We did that for a couple of three years. And then eventually I went into, into the uh, diesel garage down the mine, because they had underground locomotives. Right. And I were maintaining them up until I was 21. And then at 21, I went diesel drive, diesel locomotive drive for about 12 years. Did you have to have a license for that? Uh, you, you had got to pass a test. Yeah. yeah. So you became a train driver? Yeah. But both coal and uh, passengers. You didn't use the same? Yes. So you Same diesel. 
It's the same truck, as it were, the same train. No, you, you had different uh, different wagons for uh, for for the pa we used to call them paddies. Yes. A passenger train. But Where does paddy come from? I don't know. No idea. And were the they? So the, fir the first ones, I've just had a funny enough, I just had a chat from Bentley, he was talking about, he found at tea breaks, he used to go off and find corners of the mine that were unoccupied, and he found in there one of the old transporters where you were back to back, and you looked, as you drove down, you looked at the walls as you were back to back on your guys. Did you start off on those ones? No, what we started off on, let me explain, is th the same kind of things what, uh, uh, transported the coal, we used to get empties, put chains in between for safety, you know, in between each car, mm. and then put forms in either side. Forms? Yeah, forms to sit on. Oh, foam, as in... Uh, no, form. Form. Yeah. Right. You seven us. <laughs> so a form is a seat, is it? Yes. So you wouldn't I've never heard of that. Form? Yeah. No. Oh, form no. In, a, in a school. Oh, it's in a school form? Yeah. Oh, right, okay. A, l a long bench like seat. Oh, I gotcha. Oh, yeah, yeah. Eventually. Benches. Benches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what you call them, yeah. And uh, so then we used to have to transport the men in to the faces and then leave the paddies and then come out and, and drop onto the coal, wait for the coal being produced into empty cars, fetch it out as many, as many miles as five miles sometimes. Jesus. So you took all the forms out, put them on the side until the next shift? No, sometimes you used to just leave them all ready, there, ready for the, because the, the, the miners had got to come out, the yeah. colleagues had got to come out at the end, if there were room to stack them somewhere. Yeah. God. And then so, so the coal would then, so you, how often, okay, how long does it take to fill up a paddy? So no, you only call them paddies when there were many. Okay. But what are they called when they're not? Empties. So tubs. Tubs. Yes. Tubs. Well, at Brosworth, we were the first ones at Brosworth to have what we call mine cars, not little tubs, but long mine cars with copper Westinghouse couplings, what you just banged into, oh. like the modern ones on trains nowadays, yeah, actually. Yeah. And uh, oh, how long did it take? It all depends if they were filling coal, because the coal used to come out from the face on conveyors, and the, the empties used to run under the end of the, the loader, and it used to fill them up. And then when they got a, a train load full for the locomotive to, to uh, pull out to the pit bottom, they'd uncouple them, let them run down, You'd follow them down with the locomotive, couple on, and take it out. Right. And we had a, at Brosworth, they had a, well, a mile long drift went up like that. First gear for about a quarter of an hour. Really? Yeah. We, How we, fast is first gear? Three point some up mile an hour. Full revs. Really? Yeah. Ah. Yeah, oh, I. And if the diesel's smelling, is the diesel kind of fumes. Oh, very smelly, yeah. Yeah, and noisy. Really? Mm. Quite un unpleasant. Yeah. Yeah. And as a one driver, are you the only guy on the machine? Yeah. So you're at the front with the joysticks? Yeah. No steering wheel, just a button on and off and... It were just a, a lever. Ge gearing? What, what you could pull on and put, put on a ratchet. And, and a, an air brake. So you, you've got to be extra careful because the air brakes didn't run to the, to the extra mine cars, all the mine cars on the train. So just, to your, just, to just your. the diesel just had air brakes, so you've got to be very careful because mm. you've got about 20 cars on. What, tw uh, two ton in each, two and a half ton in each? Yes. About 100 ton. So you've got to be careful. It's a hell of an engine then. Yeah, 100 horsepower though. Good. Well. Because um, the Bentley disaster, there was there was an accident in the 70s, wasn't there? With a paddy, uh, not the paddy. Oh, there were lots sorry. of accidents. With um, the, the guys, the guys got crushed, and I heard uh, in the last. Uh, Bentley. Yeah. 
Oh, I don't know about that. Brodsworth Hour. Yeah. My uh, brother-in-law got killed at, really? uh, at, at Bullcroft Colliery before they merged with Brodsworth. They had a system there. You know, the cage goes up and down, mm. down with empties, shoved the empties off with the coal, and the coal, one full of coal, went up. And his job, when it was time for the men to ride, was to shove the empties off. Jesus, thank you. Thank you, yes. Paul. Shove the empties off so that he could get it ready, the cage, for a man riding. As they were doing this, they had like a, he were on the bottom deck, we used to call it, two decks on these cages. And he were on the bottom deck and they used to fetch coal down the, this deck with some catchers. We stood up like that on a creeper. He used to ro lower them down and one of these must have broken and mm. run straight in, into him and smashed him, killed him. And he dropped? No, it were, it were coming down hill, slight hill. It broke up, broke these, ca the catches were broke or something, it got away, it run into him. He were only 20. Oh, he were at school with me. Mm. Anyway, great kid. You know, um, you kind of go into this career, you're kind of light hearted and you kind of like, it's going to be fun down the mine and all that sort of stuff. No, I never thought that. No? But there must be a moment, I'm just thinking, your best mate or your mate at school, you're in this job and you don't really understand, maybe you do, but you're thinking, oh yeah, there's accidents, they're all over the place. Suddenly a bloke next close to you gets killed. Is there a sudden moment where you go, holy shit, I am in... Well, there's, I've never been in a position where a, a mate of mine's got killed, but close. Mm. I mean, we were, I graduated up to working on the coal face at M, and uh, I used to work with a, a little bloke partner, we were always together, Johnny Richards, they call him. And our job at that time was to uh, sit in the, have you heard about the chocks? We'll work up and down, and, and we'll, our job was to advance the uh, the chocks after the. You're not chop docs, chop doctors. Yeah, there were chop doctors, like fitters. Yeah. But we wasn't one of that. We were just men who advanced, right. face men who, who looked after the chocks and advanced them after mm. the machine had gone by. Right. And it used to all the waste at back used to just flush down. Eventually. Into the, into the gob? Yeah, gob. As you advance these chocks, everything up back were left up. So every so, a, so often, it used to just collapse. Mm -hmm. First time it frightened me to death. Yeah. And anyway. What's that noise like? like? Just like a roar. It just starts rumbling and then it get, just gets every, the, the heaviest thunder you've ever heard. Really? Yeah. yeah. But this little lad, he was only about five foot Johnny Richards. And he, he got, I don't know how, this, this waste when it came down, this gob, it flushed through these chocks and buried him. Mm. So I finished up getting on his ankles and pulling him out. He says, littlest bloody person on that pit. And he says, I had to get in here. <laughs> yeah. Bloody hell. And he survived? Oh, yeah. So he was yeah. under rubble and under the... Yeah, cold rubbish. So it collapsed the chocks. It just it, knocked the it chocks just out. it just dropped at back of the chocks and then just flushed forward. It just goes. Oh, right. boom! It's like a landslide that yeah. crept underneath yeah. into the supposed safe space. Well, yes. Yeah. Flushed through them because there's about a, a, a gap sometimes about a foot God. between each one, and he were unlucky to get that. It's pretty. Um... What happened to the situation like that? Does he go up to the surface and just take yeah. a day off? No. Dust himself down and starts away again. Yeah. There's no like procedure going It was nothing serious. He wasn't buried long enough. I, I, I dragged him out quick. What the hell? <laughs> Did you have to report things like that? Or just, no. just ignore it? Yeah. It was just part of the job. Unless there were injuries, like. <laughs> so that was this incredible noise. And then he goes, oh! The and legs then, stuck. Then, then all the, all the air come in. So you get this yeah. warm or cold air? Warm. So it's like a hot. Especially in face. 
five mile out, oh, it gets hotter and hotter the further you get out. If, really? Yeah. If, if you're on a face what's near to the pit bottom of the pit shaft, it's, it's usually cold. But further you get out, five miles or so, we used to work in just shorts and boots mm. and a and helmet, nothing else, and, and wet through. How long did it take you to qualify to get to the pit face? Well, face. same as I was saying, I, I went graduated from then I, I diesel driving for 12, 12 years. So then I, did you enjoy that? Yes. Was there crack with the, with the men? Yeah, good. You'll never get the same camaraderie yeah. as, as with the, there. So Everybody you, says that. So you're a bit like a bus driver, really. You met mm. him at the end of every yeah. shift. Yeah. What are you doing in between the, the beginning and the end? You're taking the coal out, turning it into tubs, and you're doing coal. Well, first of all, started with the empties, where the empties come down the pit and then they, they run down all, so that they're all together like a dispatch yard. Mm, all right. So you, 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 when it was your turn, you drop down and wait till there were a call to go somewhere. The dispatcher had, had sent you to somewhere to a unit. You'd go there, wait for 20 cars to be filled and then fetch them out and then again drop the coal off and then take your turn to drop back down again. Yeah? Yeah. So you're busy? Yeah. You're very busy? Sometimes, it, yeah, but sometimes... And are you by yourself doing all that? No, you, you, there was a load of guys. There were other guys there as well. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just thinking, I'm just imagining you're doing all of the manual stuff with the coal and the, the, the moving of the, the tubs and stuff, and then at the end of the day you get 30 guys on the, on the tubs, on your forms. And then fetch them out. And then that's when your crack starts, that's when you chat, you have a chat and you have banter. Mm. And it's quite a nice end to the day, mm. nice beginning yeah. and a nice end. And uh, what to remember as well is your time didn't, your shift was, say on days, six or quarter past one. But you got to be down the pit in your rags for six o'clock, else you get, got sent home. Oh, right. So you got to, Arrive about half an hour before yeah. in, in your, in your civvies, get out of them, leave them in your clean locker, walk across naked to the other side, get your rags on. Naked? Yeah. <laughs> okay. And it's then, quite cold then. Mm. Certain times of year? No. They used to be heated pit baths. <laughs> Crikey. So you, you, you were asking about how I graduated to yes. the coal face. how long did it take? Well, it all depends on the individual, actually. I mean, I think you could, you could qualify to go on the face or go for uh, uh, training at 18. But I was doing these other jobs, graduated other jobs. And I, I think I went on when I was about 30 odd. Right did all the jobs in between, like uh, what they call contracting, ripping tunnels out and, yeah. and setting gears and things like that. And, and, then the ring, I, and the rings and the... Yeah. So you went through nearly every, well, every job? Well, not every job, but a lot of them. Were you ever a market man? Yes. Everybody, every face man were sooner or later a market man. Because one, one, when one face finished, they, they used to pick another team to go on the next face. So then we'll just come off a face with market men. Right. So when you say when a face finished, you mean the actual scene, the whole scene? Mm. When you reach no, the ship? There might be more than one face in a seam, but when you reach the boundaries, say next to uh, next to us were Ickleton pit, when you reach their boundary, oh, you stop. Really? Okay, I didn't understand that. So there's a pit five miles away. You They're could, underground. You could take the coal to there. When you got there, you stopped. Because they've, on top, they've actually Because demarked. they were, they were probably coming that way to it, to meet you. Wow. So you've actually demarked on top, they've mapped the territories. I suppose so, yeah. And you're underneath going, okay, mm. we could still do valuable work, but they're on the other side. Mm. And yeah. They are, I suppose, God, I suppose the whole, think about it, you've got a hundred foot kind of gallery of Whole face, and you could be more ten, than that, well, whatever it is 200, 300. 
yards. And you could be 10 yards away on the other side from guys coming the other way. Yeah. And sometimes you could come up against some old workings, some old pit workings, and say, right, that's it, boys, no, no further. So it's a bit like Indiana Jones. You suddenly break into a, mm. you break into a whole underground yeah. cavity. And every now and again, I, I just mentioned, mentioned it, Eccleton, didn't I? Yeah. We'd got to walk out what they call a second egress, second exit. Everybody in the pit had got to know this second egress in case... It's like an uh, escape. Yeah, an emergency. So, you know, you, you, you finish up going down one pit, Rosworth, and, and coming out at Eccleton. Oh, Jesus. Walking. That's incredible. I mean, without, does it go beyond the bounds of imagination to say you could start at Brodsworth and end up at Hatfield underground? Uh, I don't think it's a bit far that because yeah. could you go from a bit of distance link, in between? Yeah, could each mine link up in the, you know, it didn't happen in reality, but it wouldn't be too far of a leap of the imagination to imagine all these mines linking mm. up in the end if you if you pursued it, it as honeycomb. Yeah, I suppose it couldn't do, yeah. Jesus. Yeah. And it's all under, all under this. There were a lot of subs, substance around it because this is what I've just been telling you about, the total collapsing, they used to call it, at the back of the chalks. Used to come down. Yeah. Of course, then, above it, there were a, a, a void, weren't they? Yeah. And some of the roads sometimes went down, and houses. And was there any legislation for that or any kind of... I mean, did you, ever, did you have to think about that in the planning or did you just, like, if it happens, it happens? Because you can never... Well, really I don't know, but uh, I think I think when people uh, would uh, complain, like the map were complaining, but I, I, I never heard anybody getting anything for it. No. So, I mean, do you know of properties that would sink in a sink? I mean, I presume they're kind of sinkholes, aren't they? That you'd be creating upstairs. Well, not as drastic as that, but you know, you can go cracks in the walls. you can go through yeah cracks in walls in houses and that. But some of the roads around here, you can see where they they slipped. You know, and they had to film it. That's amazing. Yeah. Isn't it? Wow. Because the geology is fascinating. I mean, the fact that you're collapsing. I mean, I suppose you get. There must be a. I mean, what are you mining? I mean, it, 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 does the rock that you're mining, is it sympathetic to coal? For example, is there a granite that you know when you get to granite? you get the coal after? Or is it always different? They always used to say, I mean, and I graduated onto the big, have you seen these big uh, coal cutting machines? Yeah, yeah, yeah. With a big disc. The massive like rocket yeah. sort of ends. Well, when you, I didn't do much of that, but I, I did do my training on, on them. And, and they, were, they always tell you, there's so much above the seam, leave a couple of three inches. They used to call that conning. I don't know what that stood for, oh. but that, held the, the roof up until you could get under with the chocks. So the coal was literally a structural thing as well. Mm. That two three, that kind of kept everything. Oh, well, you could see the coal. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, it was quite a strong thing. Oh, so yeah. Hold yeah, it into yeah. play, like yeah. a ceiling yeah. between you and the granite. Yeah. Is it granite or no, sandstone? No, it's or no, limestone? Gra not granite, no. It's like a limestone, is it, or sandstone? Yeah, well, I don't know, but it, this conny were a bit mashy, but it used to hold the roof up. The, the dangerous part of working on a coal face was when the coal face, the roof, gave in. Yeah. And before you could take the chocks under to a safe position, somebody had got to go on top of the chocks in the hole and make that safe Jeez. so that you could advance them. And what, what it used to make me mad at that time was when you've got a situation like that, when, whenever you wasn't cutting coal, you didn't get bonus. Mm. So there were people out by, and you know, people working in different t things connected to NCB, getting paid bonus, and we were working in dangerous conditions, up in an hole where anything could collapse on us any minute, so you were and getting those, nothing. And you were one of those guys up in the hole? Yeah, sometimes. When, when it collapsed, Somebody had got to go up and make it right. Put wood across, you know, and mm. so that you could get under with these chocks. I'm just going to look forward for a second. 
Yeah, the thing is about mining. When, when you get to working on the coal face and, and you're making top money, you think, this is good, This I'm not going to get much better here. But the, the thing is, when I came out of the pit, when they closed the pit, my mate were working for DHL. Mm. They just started in this country then in 1990. And uh, it, it were a more or less international couriers job. Yeah. And I, I trained in that. And I, I run more money straight away than I would out there. Really? Yeah, on face. So it changed when your dad's time, mm. which was genuinely like right, honey. Yeah. You were almost under the impression that you were still on good money. Mm. Yeah. But the world outside well, had changed. Well, the thing is, if you're in a, a community like, like I was at Brodsworth, at Woodlands, uh, there were no other. I mean, everything were geared to the pit. I suppose you don't mix with people from DHL because you're in a miners club in the evenings, you're socialising with miners. You have your own kind of community and you're paying all that sort of stuff as relates to the mates around you, doesn't mm -hmm. it? Well, that must have been quite a shock. Yeah, it was a, a, a right shock, I'll tell you, because when you were down the pit, all the under managers, managers, whatever, you had to call them mister. So, me being down the pit for 30 years, when I went to work for DHL, I'll call this, I will call him this, this manager, Mister. He said, whoa, whoa, don't call me Mister, call me by my first name. It was right culture shock, that one. Gosh. It was right medieval down pit. Yeah, medieval. So of course, that or being in the uh, military service yeah. or something. Another example would be, uh, let me have a drink of tea. Another example would be, my uncle, he's dead now, right, but, he used to live next door to this bloke called George Hayes. He were a manager. And he came down my uncle's pit one day and, and uh, he saw him and, and my uncle said to him, I, I hope George, how are you going on? And, and he just tapped him on the shoulder and he says, when you come up pit, come in my office. And he tore a strip off him when he went up in the office. He says, when I'm down the pit, you call me mister. Jeez. Yeah. And he grew up with him. This club. That's how they were. On hindsight, did you like that? Did what? Did you like that culture, that kind of... No. Well, having said that, I didn't know any other. Yeah. Yeah. From 15, I'd, I'd had that. Up to uh, 46 when I came out, when, when the pit closed. So it was like a... I don't know when I came out at Pitt, brilliant, fantastic, working with people, call it gaffers, by the first name of that. I, even, I was playing badminton with one of them at one time, I, was like, I couldn't get my head around it. Really? Yeah. Gosh. Did you, pref did you like the work in DHL? Is it yes. In comparison? When I first started, yes, it was brilliant, it's, it's, it's grown a lot now, and it's stretched, and. They were having this trouble with uh, French, no, Kentucky Fried Chicken, aren't they yeah, now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they're stretching themselves too much. But yeah. at that time, they were just coming into this country because they're an American country. Yeah. And they were, everything were documents transported to get there the next day. So you got to know all the uh, customs regulations and everything. Were you driving? Yeah. So was it like, okay, so you... You're, you're in a culture and you're working relatively very, very hard and you're underground and you're a part of this whole world. You know, a couple of weeks or however long it takes for the mind to close and you to get a new job. When you get your new job, it must be like coming out of the dark mm. into a world you get and you must do sure. things. You think, am I allowed to do this? Yeah. Am I allowed to do this? Exactly. And you look over your shoulder and you think, I've got a vehicle and I'm by myself on a road 200 miles away yeah. from from where I should be and no one's on my back. Yeah, exactly, that's just, exactly how it was. And I can just pull in when I want and... Gosh. It's like You're leaving... under a li little bit of pressure, like, because you've got to get to certain places at certain times, but... but it's like leaving school and oh, finding yeah. yourself... Yeah. Weird. Age 46 as well. Yeah, yeah. You're thinking, God, it's like going out of jail. God. <laughs> it's fascinating, isn't it, because you think... Obviously, everyone talks about the incredible community, the incredible bond, the incredible camaraderie, and all that you talked about already. The crack. 
Yeah. All this stuff yeah. is brilliant. But never actually, get never get the same mates again. No. And yet, you know, working for DHL was a kind of a liberation. Mm. And every time I, I, I drive by Brosworth Pit now, I spit. No. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Hated really? it. Hated the work. Loved the blokes. Did the, only did the work because it was a thing to do in the community. Wow. I think that particular time, around 19 pound a week, our diesel driving then, diesel locomotive drive. And uh, our, uh, we were on a picket line and uh, this policeman who were with us wouldn't believe our, our own 19. He says, You're working out pit for 19 pounds. I mean, 72, it's hard to believe, isn't it? But he wouldn't believe me, this, this, this policeman. Really? And we, we got a big rise then. When did the National Coal Board get involved? When did it move from, coal, coal, from private ownership to the Coal Board? What dates? Oh, I don't know. It was NCB when I started in 1959, oh, so it was quite 60. And I think that then they went private when she closed the lockdown. Yeah. That's it. Mm. Yeah. And the strike only started, you know, because our union had got a mandate. If she closes, a pit down, we were going to come out and strike. So she knew. Yeah. So she closed one down, didn't she? To see she, what it was like. Yeah, just to take us on. And we lost. Yeah. How long were you? How long did it last? A year. A year. And uh, during it were about six months halfway through when I when I uh, moved into this shop. And uh, that's how I kept my family. The shop? Mm. So you went full time in the shop, really? Mm. And I, Did and the I, shop have hard times because of the strike? No, because it, even though there were a pit at Barnborough, which is next door to Arlington, most of the village didn't work at the pit. Oh, really? No. So it were, it, we, it were good for that way. So if you were actively striking, were you working in the shop certain hours and then going down to the to the pit to to sign in, as it were, and stand outside the no, entrance? No, no, no. While ever I were in the shop during the strike, no, we didn't have to go down. No. But up until then, we, we were having to go to the local welfare and get food and things like that. Yeah. And when, when I sold the house. Moved in with my dad, yeah. mum and dad, until we found this shop. I used to enjoy it. What, living with your dad? No, the shop. <laughs> because they were a pub 10 yards away. Oh, really? Oh, brilliant. And you get a real part of the community, because everybody wants, thinks that everybody's got a shop, got plenty of money, so, can you yeah. do this for us? Will you give us a prize for this? Will you do that? And so you get involved. Yeah. Put this poster up. Mm. Yeah. Half of me is thinking, we're trying to entertain the grandchildren here. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be laughing the red off. What's their name again? Callum. Callum. Hello. Uh, and Annabelle. Annabelle, that's a nice name. How old's Annabelle? Leah and Isabel. Good Lord, there's tons of them. Are they young or are they old? Am I talking to 20 year olds really? No, 13 to 20. Which one's 20? The one who's here oh, in, a, in a lecture know. now. Really? Are you going to meet her for a coffee after? Well, I told her I was going to be here, but she said, I'm, I'm in a lecture 113. I said, well, that's my appointment time, so. Whether we do or not, I don't know. Put a bit of hair on you. It's really <laughs> oh, you. please, can you, can you <laughs> press it on there? Cover that one up. <laughs> it's amazing what difference that sort of thing makes. Mm -hmm. Look at the 
back of your head soon, if you excuse me for a minute. Can you do that? So they, do you see them a lot, your grandkids? Yes, very close family. Yeah. One lives at Armthorpe, which is down the other side of town, and one lives at Sprotborough, I don't know if you know it, that side of town. Yeah. What, is that every weekend type thing? Yeah, sometimes uh, more. No time to yourself. <laughs> Are you a babysitting granddad? We're more of a dog sitting granddad oh, really? now. They go away on holiday, we look after the dog. And where are Christmases? The what? Where are your Christmases? Do they all entertain you for Christmas or do you have them all over? Well, well we do it between us. The uh, eldest daughter, she didn't want us to be on her own so this, this year, so they took us out for a meal, out for a Christmas meal. All right. uh, but before, we, we've been to the other daughters, or they've come to us. Yeah, we work it between us. Do they know, are, they, are they well versed in your mining past? Oh, yes. They know full well. Is there stories that come out regularly? I've got to be careful when I go to the eldest daughters mm -hmm. because her husband is a very big Thatcherite. Oh, crikey. So wow. we don't speak about it. Holy moly. In front of him. How did that happen? He's an accountant. Oh, right. Good man to know. Mm. Bet you took a long time to have to deal with that. Yes. I, I don't deal with it. I just. Don't approach the subject. Yeah. Did it take a long time to learn that? Yeah. When he married my uh, eldest daughter, my marriage speech was, my missus went in this bookshop to buy a Thatcher book for the son-in-law, and I stopped outside, I wouldn't go in. Jeez. I refused to go in. Pretty damn emotional, isn't it? Mm -hmm. pretty Still is now. No. Thirty years after. I've come. I mean, since I've been here, you know, I've become quite little bit. Yeah, it's just the the village where I used to live when I was at the at the mine, Woodlands. Mm. They run a lot of the scabs out of, out of the village, put yeah. the windows through and run them out. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it was very bitter. And where did those, I mean, was there many? Well, half a dozen, a dozen, so. No, some, some of them, the, the wives, you drove them back into work because they couldn't manage no money. Very hard. Did you deep down have any sympathy with, yeah. the, with their plight? Yes, because there were one lad who used to work with me and uh, he were a great kid, but his wife were a bit... Top. Oh. Over the top. She, she ruled the rules, so she drove him back and, you know, you don't, you don't see him again. He, he got, he's gone. God, if you could, even, sort of, what's the word? Design a way to break up a community. She did it. Yeah. And not one, just one community. Yeah, yeah. It, it were every community what had a pit. Arthur Scargill's wife were involved a lot, you know. Really? That's right, yeah. So it might be, I don't know whether you'd be interested in getting, getting in touch with her. She was very active. What did she do? 
What did she do? Yeah. She organised the wives and uh, you know the uh, food and things like that for yeah. the for the miners. Yeah. Did you have much to do with Arthur Scarborough? Did you see him meet him? Yes, I did meet him. He came down our pit. This was before the strike. Yeah, and uh, yeah, he, ca he came along the face. And at that time, I were working on on what we used to call a lip. Then, where the, where you, end of the face, you used to make the the tunnel which followed the face. And he came out, came from out of the face and talking to us. Did you like him? Oh yes, my hero. Really. He did a lot for compensation. Yeah. That's why we've got a good pension scheme. Because the mining community and the kind of they were looking, they looked after all aspects of life, really, didn't they? They were almost like replacing the council in mm. the sense of the facilities, the clubs, the sport. Well, the infrastructure. We we used to live on a road, what they call a welfare road. Oh, really? At Woodlands, and that the the uh, welfare big building there used to used to uh, uh, they used to hold everything there. Everything used to go, off. and uh, they used to have a cycle track. Gosh, they've got a cricket pitch, football pitch, everything were organised there, and now we play bowls on the uh, welfare green. It's still called the Welfare Group. Pardon? It's still called yes, the Welfare Yes, Broadsworth Welfare Bowling Club. And are they all ex-miners you play with? Well, m mostly. We're only associate members. We're not uh, members who uh, take part in the competitions. Like We're not competitive. So there's just four of us, two couples, go down and we pay so much just all to right. play on a Friday and then we, we have about a couple of hours, a couple of three hours, and then we go for a, a, a for our lunch in a pub, local yeah. pub. Well, I'm going for an eye now. I'll be quiet then. Mm, just don't stare me out either. You're intimidating. <laughs> You'll have to look at me. I might be intimidating. Not in the least. Uh, I've enjoyed your company. Uh, <laughs> You're going to go, what does that taste like in a minute? Can I have some? I've been wondering. I think I'll give you a smiley crow's foot. You deserve that. All right. You've been relatively entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Lawrence, hurry up. Smoothing it now, so it's taking every every time he smooths it down with some four years ago off, so let him keep smoothing. The longer the better for you. The more sore your bum, the younger you're gonna look, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I could do with some of that. <laughs> We're down to the 84 now. Alright. Quite a while to go then. Yeah. It's like a what do you call them? A cage? A lift going down. Yeah. Cage. Into the dark. You said you went down Capstick, didn't you? Yeah, I did. That's great. You said it were a long way down. No, it wasn't. We used to go nine, 1,900 foot and then 2,500 foot. What? Mm. 2,000? Yeah, 2,500. Thorncliffe Sea. Two and a half kilometres. Foot, sorry, not metres. Foot. What's that in? It's just over a mile. 1,760 is a mile. I go down a ladder and I, <laughs> I go down stairs. I think I'm uh, far. It used to be great. You're talking about the cage. Going, can you imagine going down the cage on a on a Monday morning after everybody's been on ale all weekend? No, it's like Sunday. You can football, feel, isn't it? feel <laughs> because everybody were, were pressed like that up against each other. So every release of air, you could feel it coming up. <laughs> yeah, Sun Sunday League football, there was always that one guy that was confident on the toilet and he'd always beat the lads into the changing rooms. Go in the toilet and he'd come out smiling. Yeah. It'd take about 30 seconds until the room were full of your block. <laughs> yeah. 
to get changed. I, I used to be mates with a bloke called George Clarkson, the big lad he was. And I wasn't that big then. He used to make mince me to me. But every time we got on the cage, I used to get the back of him, get over his neck like that, and he, he were useless. He couldn't do anything. He, he was scared stiff of this, this cage. But, so he said, Marshall, when I get off here, I'll kill you. <laughs> How big was the cage? Or did they bear it? Uh, was it a generic size? Sometimes, say, look, looking at them uh, things up there, them yellow things, yeah. about as wide as that. What, three yellow? Three decks? yellow, yeah, and, and up to the door, maybe. Two decks, that's my phone, isn't it? She's well, telling, probably, you, yes, please. And, uh, but then there were a bigger one, which were double as wide as that, and, and uh, two decks. I can't see. No, our phone's on in class. One missed call. One lock. It's giving me the Wi Fi, isn't it? Yeah. Are you alright, Leonard? Uh, Lawrence? It's, it's, good, it's, good, it's good, as long as you're looking down as good, I can get the top of your head. Get me glasses, will you, please? Sir. They're in the same pocket. Yeah. Sandra Moore, thank you. Now, this is going to be interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, Christ, there you go. Who's this guy? <laughs> yeah. I don't use this very often, mate. I say these are for emergency. So I just have a wander down? I bet she's in lay-by. Yes, please. So it, I'll, I'll give her a call first, shall I? Option, send us more, we'll call, yes. <coughs> now then, are you, are you outside? I'm outside, are you ready? Uh, no, I'm going to be another 10 minutes or so. Oh. Are you all right? Okay. He ain't lay by. Yeah. I think Daniel's Daniel Daniel's gonna come down to you. Oh, all right. How will I know him? You'll he'll, know. He'll make himself known. <laughs> okay. See ya. Ta da. You want me to? It's good. It's good. Thank you. Looks like you've got a big piece of chewing gum stuck in your mouth. I think they're coming. You're arriving, as we say. Good. Mm. Yeah. Laura, 
Lawrence, Sandra, Sandra Lawrence. Hi. Hello. Do you want to see? I always thought you were going to have a neck covered. You're open. It's as though you'd have to sit there with straw to be around for cover you. Honestly. It stands like that, so you're going to be constantly looking up. Yeah. Brilliant. I'm glad you think so. I've called him in for extra time, I'm afraid. He's been talking too much and he's got a very oh, does, does. bloody annoying happy face, which I don't like. She wouldn't say that. No, he's not like that at all. He's enjoyed talking about mining, would you believe? Oh, he loves it. Yeah, would you yeah, believe that? Yeah. I don't think he's spoken about it before. He you didn't know? want it ever to be forgotten, actually. That's you, his feeling. You're on your to show now, Sandra. No, sir. He's signed the official secrets act. Not talking. I'll come and have a ball tonight. So if you've got a little bit of time, I might get that twinkle in the eye you fell in love with all those years ago. Yeah, but you can go now if you want. You forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Depends how you know, desperate you are to get home. It's obviously a happy marriage. Well, it had to be. She told 50 me, years. He told me how happy you are with him. <laughs> Sometimes. You're the cat that got the cream, he said. Oh, no. <laughs> you are a liar. <laughs> it's all on telly. It's all on telly. Yeah. Okay, how are we there? Got one minute. <coughs> oh. He still looks like an actor. I always said when he did his photo. He looks like an he looks actor. Looks like a Shakespearean actor. Well, we are full. When you were younger, what did we say you used to look like when you were younger? Gradually, he's moved on. He's too young. Judy Dench? No. <laughs> no, they call me Mustache. Mustache? Tom uh, Selleck or something. Tom Selleck. Sure. In what used to be a Magnum? Yeah, what they call him. Mag Tom Selleck, yeah. Yeah, Tom, Tom Selleck. Tom Selleck, yeah. Do you know him then? Do you know him? Would well, I know him? Yeah, big oh, moustache. Yeah. And I used to have a big moustache. Magnum. Magnum. I used yeah, to have a big moustache. <laughs> yeah. When were you younger? That would have been fun. I'd have got an easy like this then. <laughs> I'd have got an easy like this then. Okay. Done? Yeah. There you are. You've got that angle. Oh, that's yeah. definitely him, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't it you, Keith, that? You can see better than me. Oh, it's definitely, yeah. Ready? I've got the angle? Yeah. <laughs> Please? Yeah. Happy. All right. All right. Benevolent face, smiling. When I tell him he's nice, he tells me I'm...